My name is uh, Dr. Hamid. I'm one of the uh, professor at the University of Toronto. And with me, uh, we have panelist uh, Dr. Uzair, who is uh, one of our regular uh, attendee here. He's a healthcare management consultant and the director of Canada Pakistan Research and um, uh, Developmental Council. Uh, along with us, we have um, uh, Mr. Umar Hayat. He's joining us from California, and then uh, Mr. Sarvath Hussain. I'm going to introduce you. It is my privilege and it's honor that I have this opportunity to introduce such an academic person who is going to talk on the fostering linkage between medicine, engineering, and industry for better health care, which is a very unique topic. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of it, and I'm looking forward to hear from him. Major General Professor Muhammad Aslam. He has an achiever and a doer, and he has shown by doing um, his four decades of teaching and training experience, and he has taught so many uh, undergraduates as well as the postgraduates in the field of physiology as a supervisor. He has been globally uh, global speakers, and he has uh, banked over 100 publications in a very elegant journals. He has a very long uh, associations and he has been founder of so many uh, esteemed organizations and I feel a little bit as a tongue twister for me. He has been the founding president South Asian Association of Physiologists, vice president of Eastern Mediterranean Association of Medical Editors, former president of Pakistan Association of Medical Editors and former chief editor of Pakistan Armed Forces Medical Journal and chief editor of Pakistan Journal of Physiology. He is also served as a principal Army Medical College Rahul Pindi, founding vice chancellor, Shifa Tamir Millat University, Islamabad, vice chancellor, University of Health Sciences, Lahore, pro vice chancellor, National Institute of Medical Sciences, which we call it NUMS, Rahul Pindi, and currently he is advisor postgraduate education and research at Shifa Islamabad and dean basic medical health sciences on College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan, which we call it as a CPSP. I would like to uh, let him start his presentation and so we can all get to know what's this topic going to bring to us. Can you start? Yes, please. Right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most graceful, Rabbi is in the O oh Lord, advance me in knowledge. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hamid, uh, for your inflated uh, introduction. Uh, now, I am um, privileged to give a deliberation uh, tonight on tonight for you. It's today for fostering linkage between medicine, engineering, and industry for better health care. So for this particular topic, according to WHO, the definition of health is, it is a state of physical, mental, and social wellness or well-being, and not only absence or abstinence of the disease. So this definition of WHO like, has incited us to have various facets of health. And these facets of health are preventive health, promotive health, curative health, reconstructive health, and rehabilitative health. Unfortunately, over 90% of the focus in Pakistan has been given on curative health. The rest are generally being ignored. Now, Hardin from University of Dundee, United Kingdom, in 2000, defined 11 steps of the integration ladder in learning or in education, specifically medical education, starting from isolation, and then climbing up to awareness, to harmonization, to nesting, temporal coordination, sharing, correlation, complementary, and finally, the last three steps are multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, 
and transdisciplinary. So my focus of today's talk is on interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approach in healthcare system. Now, the learning objective of these, this 40 or 45 minutes talk is to create awareness to interlink medicine and engineering with industry for innovative, interventional, and interesting healthcare delivery to improve health for all. Now let us see uh, which are the areas of linkages where medicine, engineering, and industry, they join together. As in Pakistan, three joints on the, of the earth, Himalaya, Hindu Kush, and Karakram, they join their Gilgit, Pakistan, union point of the three joints. Similarly, medicine, engineering, and industry, they unite, are joined, are linked in many areas. So today's talk is which are those areas in which the doctors can jump from the hospital medicine to the industry or engineering for better health care and vice versa. The engineers could jump into medical branches as well. So first is biophysics. We know it well that it is used in kidney dialysis, radiation therapy, cardiac defibrillation, pacemakers, artificial health wells. So why doctors, why we don't get involved with the engineers, like to manufacture, to design, to redesign, to reframe, to further improve for the better healthcare system. And then the other area is biomathematics. When engineering meets biology, that is biomathematics, which means in medicine, how molecules move in and out of the cells, how bacteria shuttle through the blood vessels, how drugs are broken down in the body. We can't understand with medicine only. So we have to merge medicine with mathematics or medicine with biology or engineering. And then the other area is biomedical engineering. So this area in the developing countries like ours in Pakistan is very much ignored. Now this means how to design equipment, how to device such as an internal organ, replacement of the body parts, diagnostic medicines. So why doctors only look to the hospital? Why can't we work in biomedical engineering branches with the industry like for the better healthcare system? Similarly, the other area is biotechnology. The use of biotechnology, it utilizes biological systems, living organisms to develop, create genetic material like DNA. So with biotechnology, biomedical engineering, we can switch on to gene therapy. And gene therapy is going to be the ultimate answer to diabetes mellitus, and to many a form of the cancers and so many others. So we doctors, rather than being hospital physicians, we can jump into biotechnology to create genetic materials, to modify genetic materials. And then the other form, or the other area, we are doctors and engineers, like with the help of industry can go for bionics. So which is the future of health technology. Now, bionics is used to develop bionic model devices and equipment. And then the other area of linkages could be bioinstrumentation. Bio now, to develop bioelectrical signals like electrocardiogram, electro, electro, uh, electromyograms, electroencephalograms. So, all electrophysiology and physiological transducers for measurement of blood pressure, blood flow, cardiac output, and blood gases, and many others. So bioinstrumentation, why doctors, they remain confined to the patients? Why don't they go to the industry or join hands with the engineers in bioinstrumentation? 
So because when the from the user's point of view, doctor is the user for these equipments, when user itself becomes a manufacturer or a designer or a manager or a leader, so the venue or the vista of healthcare system would change. And then the other area of linkages is biomaterial sciences. So biomaterial sciences has been left only to scientists, general scientists. Why physician can't become scientists in material sciences? Because we are aware of, and daily we are using biomaterials like metals, like ceramics, like glass, polymers are used in contact lenses, in pacemakers, in heart valves, in orthopedic devices, and many like. So why doctors, they remain confined like to the patient care only? Why they don't go for material sciences in biomaterial and can help the health system by devising or by customizing contact lenses, pacemaker, heart valves, and the other devices, which are daily used by them. And then the other area could be public health engineering. So mind it, please, in all developing countries, so is in Pakistan, like I can see no customized public health engineer. They are general engineer as they make a house, so they make the public health engineering uh, uh, processes or the systems that they construct like them. Otherwise, public health engineering is a very specialized interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary field. So applica application of engineering methods to improve sanitation and pollution of the human communities. So we don't have any public health engineer at all, let me say, right? So they are general engineers, which are used in construction of the hospital or construction of a town or construction of a factory, but they have no sense of sanitation or pollution of the human communities, even the hospital wastage, like the, when the hospitals are made, the engineers have no idea of hospital wastage, disposal of the hospital wastages. So there is, so it is a need of the art that doctors must go for engineering as well, like to make public health engineers. And then the other area is health architecting. Now it has the power to restore and promote. Promote means promotive health. Restore means restorative health, like a rehabilitative health. That again, develop, then again, architect is also helpful in this. So it has the power to restore, like for restorative health and to promote for promotive health, solidarity, mental and physical health, and a source of happiness. Let me say with bitterness that there is no health architecture available in Pakistan. Like, so they make factory, they make hospital, they make surgery, they make uh, uh, residential buildings, they can make towers. Similarly, they make hospitals without taking at most care of the delicacies of our architecting hospital. So that is why our hospitals, they are not customized, they are not favorable, they are like a factory or, or they can make a palace but they can't make hospitals or health architecting. So there is a point that doctors must be involved in health architecting. And then is another genetic medical uh, medicine and engineering. Genetic engineering has been used to produce human insulin. So it was porcine insulin, then it was canine, then it was bedine, like bovine insulin, but then it was became a human insulin based on genetic engineering, or human growth hormone, or human albumin, or monoclonal antibodies, or vaccines, and many drugs. So they have got genetic medicine and engineering. So their engineers and physicians, they can join hands with the help of the industry, like to, to, to make uh, these human models of hormones or chemicals or antibodies or vaccines or certain drugs which are species specific. 
like human growth hormone. So human growth hormone deficiency cannot be overcome by injecting growth hormone from the porcine or from the bovine or from the canine or from other species. So this, this is species specific property. And then the doctors can operation theater framing. Look at the state of the operation theater or operation rooms in Pakistan. So they make as a room, bedroom of a house. Similarly, they make an operation theater. Otherwise, there are much more requirement of the making operation rooms or the theater. So why? Because doctors are ignorant of engineering. Doctors, they don't speak, they don't talk, they don't interact. They don't go for interdisciplinary approach with the engineers to teach them that this is our requirement, this is what we need to make a modular OT, to make a journal surgery OT, to make a head and neck surgery OT, to make a dental OT, to make an endoscopy OT, to make an orthopedic OPT, OT, or to make an emergency OT. So each one is different in specificities. But the doctors, we the doctors, because, right, because uh, we don't, go for interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary approach. So the billion of dollars or rupees are being wasted on the operation theater and, and what is being done. Uh, and that, that reflects the bad healthcare in, in and around. Similarly, the other area of think is development of movable limbs and joints. Prosthesis designed to replace an amputated arm, leg, shoulder, ankle, knee, hell, knees, hip joints, fingers, toes, and many others. Some of them, they are not customized. So the, so the patient has to suffer. His mobility is restricted. He has to live with the pain because doctors don't join hand with the engineers to make customized delicacies, changes in the movable limbs or the fingers or the toes or any part of the body. Then the other area of linkage is or the transdisciplinary approach is cellular implants. Cellular implants for recombinant protein delivery and therapeutic modulation of the immune system. So it was said that ultimate in COVID, like in COVID crisis, it was said the ultimate therapy could be the cellular implants by the recombinant proteins. So, but have we learned it? So we have left it to the engineers only because we join, don't join hands with them and we are restricted to the hospitals for the curative medicine only. Otherwise, cellular implants, like, and then the other is human stents. We know it well, small mesh tubes that hold open passages in the body, like cardiac stents, kidney stents, and any stents, like stents in any part of the body. Like that means the stent with balloon and geoplasty is engineering, but it is used by the doctor. And there is no role of the users in its manufacturing, it is designing, and it's redesigning, and it's <clears throat> improvisation for the better health care. So the doctors must cross the boundaries of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approaches and they should go with the industry and engineering to make them customized and to make them better, the better healthcare system. And then health informatics. Why health informatics has been left to IT people only? Why the doctors don't go for health informatics? Now, it is applied to the area of physical therapy, biomedical research, nursing, dentistry, pharmacy, occupational therapy, alternate medicine, public health and clinical medicine. So why all these facets, which have been written here, like have been left to the IT people, information technology people? Why doctors don't jump into the health informatic system to improve the better health system and to make the directories like of the cancer, of the oncology and, and many of the other diseases? We don't have norms of Pakistani diseases. We only learn Caucasian, like population has this much percentage of the diseases or this much level of hemoglobin or blood glucose level 
which always is controversial for this part of the world because the doctors have not opted to go for health informatics. So, so the net, native data is not available. When native data is not available, how can we frame like the health, uh, how can I, how can we make the policy for the healthcare systems and the priorities which will be spent on on and which of the diseases with a limited risk with the limited resources and then the other area of linkage between doctors engineers and the elect electronic engineers and and the industry is electrophysiology a health a healthcare provider who deals with the heart rhythm problems brain waves problems because electrophysiology is all over in the body in the cardiac tissues in the smooth muscles in the skeletal muscles in the nerve fibers in the neurons so that would mean there are devices like which have been made which need to be improvised but until unless the doctors as a user don't jump into it it will not be customized and then the other field of uh, uh, of of linkage between doctors and engineers is the microscopic analysis microscopy an instrument which allows scientists to see shape of the cell its nucleus transport of the substances in and out like and the other organelles so that means mechanistic medicine mechanistic physiology like underpinning pathophysiological principle of the diseases like on lie on microscopic analysis so why doctor should work as a carpenter like or as an iron, iron smith or a goldsmith just to just to make the mechanical changes and why they don't jump into microscopic analysis to learn the underpinning principle of underpinning pathophysiological principle of the underlying disease so that is the real science and research in which we the doctors must join hand engineers and then is the neural tissue engineering gone are the days when it was said when we read in undergraduate that neural tissue cannot be regenerated no neural tissue can be generated of course with certain limitations but we have left it to the electronic engineers and it people neural tissue engineering grafts and scaffolds are implanted to prove nerve regeneration repair of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system like it could be used in experiments in in vitro and in preclinical on animals and then clinical on the human beings and from the clinical to the community and from the community it can go to policy making like so look at as i as i defined uh, as i narrated the definition of who for health it is the state of physical mental and social wellness and not abstinence of disease so we have stuck ourselves to abstinence of disease anybody who is free of disease is healthy like but neural mental health. so there are many people who are with mental health for which doctors can do a little because in neural tissue engineering we have not been able to play our part and then the other field of uh, 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 is hospital consumables there are minor things like scissors like gauze like say pins like thread like so which have been imported and loss of national exchequer we will keep on speaking against the governments against the policy makers but have the doctors been involved in development and improvisation of bandage gauze plasters cotton wool blood sets etc many of them almost over 80% of them they are imported from outside wasting the national exchequer otherwise if the doctors with the engineers and the industry could join in and the rich doctors if they could invest with the industry like so they could, good stuff would be have been made available to pakistan at affordable prices now keeping care of the poor community poor ailing community 
So we blame others, but doctors have a role in it that why we haven't gone. Done. If we build a house, our own house, like, and we spend one or two years, day and night, but heavy spend for the profession to make the customized hospital consumables within the country worth affordable prices for the community. The answer is no, because we are doctors for the curative health only. And then the other field is the diagnostic. No, almost all, almost all, if not all, almost all the kits are being imported. Like researchers, research students, research scholars, they can't afford it. Like the universities and the HEC and the and Pakistan Health Research Council and the Science Technology Council, they cannot afford so much of money to give the research grants. Like, so because they are all imported, and their prices go up and up because we have not been able to develop the diagnostic kits. And the doctors have not joined hand with the engineers, or in other words, engineers have not joined hand with the doctors with the help of industry to develop HIV kits, ELISA kits, malaria, dengue, troponin, vidol, typhoid, nic nicotine, and COVID diagnostic tests. Like, COVID diagnostic tests. So this COVID diagnostic test, which was costing us 5,000 to 6,000 rupees in Pakistan, like could have been 50 or 100 rupees if the doctors four decades ago would have been jumped with the engineers and with the help of industry in the manufacturing, designing the diagnostic kits. If the doctors would have gone to the research fields as well. But we are doctors of pure development. Right, and then the other field is radiation oncology. In radiation oncology, it is 80% physics and mathematics, right? Which we say it is out of curriculum in Pakistan for the medical doctors. It is 80% of physics and mathematics. Anybody who is good in physics and mathematics could become a good radiation oncologist. Right, so specialized training in performing radiation treatment for people with cancer. But have we have the doctors of Pakistan any role like in manufacturing, designing, redesigning, improvisation, customization of the equipment of the radiation oncology? Answer is no. One machine, radio oncology goes wrong with, something goes wrong with it, and for seven, eight, nine, ten months, like engineers don't come here because of the law and order or security issues or, or the cost issues, like, and the equipment is not being work, working for the last one year. And look, look at the state of affairs. Thousands of patients, they get deprived, like from that particular equipment to get the free or unsubsidized is the radiation oncology. Isn't it cruelty? Because we don't opt for interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approach of medicine. We are curative physicians. We are curative surgeons. So doctors must jump into this form because cancer is spreading. Like, and then is stem cell laboratories. The stem cells are manipulated to specialize into specific type of cells, like heart, like blood, like nerve cells. So it is the age of stem cell. And in COVID, we learned, oh, you, let's say what happened, we can go for stem cell therapy as well. Like, so stem cells, so you can, if, if we jump into stem cells with the engineers, like we can manufacture heart, muscles, blood, nerve cells, any part of the body, like, so stem cell laboratories, doctor must go into stem cells. Why this has been left to the geneticians? Why it has been left to only the biologists? Why medicine physician can't be a biologist, can't be a technologist or a stem cells expert, right? And then uh, artificial skin, bioengineering. This is, this is bioengineering, bioengineering of different types of skin cells from patients' own or from cadavers 
or from animal tissues to restore and maintain the damaged skin. Why should it be left to the engineer? Why it should be left to the industry only? Why the doctors can't become part and parcel to manufacture artificial skins? Like to give relief to many of the people, especially of the burns or some, uh, or some fatal skin diseases. So, and then the other area where doctors and engineers with the help of industry can go for is manufacturing and designing of the cardio pulmonary resuscitation machine, machines and mechanics like cardiac defibrillators, like, and, and CPR, international devices. So, so we are, in fact, we are only, we are only operating these machines. We have no role in designing as a user of these machines as a doctor. So if we, if we join hands with the engineers or if we join hands with the industry, we will be make them at customized like uh, changes in it so that they could be more usable. And then is the development of CT, computerized tomographic magnetic resonant imaging, MRI and PET scan positron emission tomography scans. So these are very, very expensive. And the poor community in Pakistan, they can't afford it. Like they can't afford periodic PET scan or MRI scans. Like, so they are innovative medical diagnostic imaging and their techniques. Otherwise, if the doctors like, like would have jumped into CT, MRI, PET and other scans, like where more, more is physics and mathematics is involved than medicine. Like if we jump into this, so we would have been able to make the chemicals, to make the devices, to make the accessories being used like and manufacturing it, rather exporting it to the other, other developing countries as well. So because we have never opted for interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approach because we are doctors, because we are mechanics, because we are curative physicians. And then is nanobiotechnology. Now this is a new field, like this is a new field, which is changing the mechanistic approach for the diseases. Now it is used in targeted drug delivery, like reducing the dose, target delivery, so that the other healthy tissues they are not having a harmful effects of, of the drugs. Targeted drug delivery, gene delivery. The gene will be given and go to the point where it is needed. And the liposomes and biomolecular engineering and biopharmaceuticals, cardiac therapy, dental care, orthopedic applications, and monoclonal formations. So nano, nanobiotechnology is a new field which is coming in the West and in USA like it is very much being advanced, but we have left it to the biotechnologist, to the biologist, and to the geneticians only, because we are doctors, right? Why should we go for transdisciplinary approach or interdisciplinary approaches? Even those people or those doctors who are rich, they can invest, they can have share in nanobiotechnology, and they can design, redesign, and they can study it further, do the short courses. Like they are more brainy, they are more brilliant, they are more scholarly attributes. Like if they go, like these biological scientists can't stay before them. And then is the other field, which is development of ventilators. And ventilators, you know, it's, it's it, like in the life and death, we knew it, but in COVID, they were not available all over the world. There was deficiency of ventilators. Now, development of mechanical negative pressure and positive pressure, non-invasive ventilators. So the doctors must join hand with the engineers, with the help of the industry, like to develop like customized ventilators. And ventilators for various diseases. So they will come when there will be different type of ventilators for different diseases, right? And from invasive, it may go to non-invasive ventilator. And then is 
No, uh, this is being used now, the gamma knife or cyber knife surgeries. Gamma knife surgeries, radiation medicine uh, machines, and cyber knife for the deep seated tumors, especially of the brain. Deep seated tumors, especially of the brain, and the vascular malformations and brain abnormalities. So, this gamma knife or cyber knife, so we have to learn its technology, not only its usage, but we have to learn. We have to have play and proactive role in its designing, in its modification, in its redesigning, like the doctors, because they are using it. Engineer is manufacturing it, but we are using it. So as a user, we must play our role with them, like in designing, redesigning of the gamma knife and the cyber knife surgeries, because it is an expensive affair. And then is look at it, robotic surgeries. Now, robotic surgeries, robotic assisted surgery allows doctors to perform many types of complex procedures with more precision, flexibility, and control than conventional techniques. So it is a high time that doctors, we should jump into the robotic surgeries, not only doing it, but how it is manufactured, how does it work, which are the mathematical principles involved with it, which are the physics principles involved in it. How can we make it better, like, and precise and personal, use for personalized surgeries? How can we make it more precision medicine? Like, so because doctors have to jump in, the, this is a day, this is the time when we have to jump in for the robotic surgeries. Not in using it, like, but to be designing it. And then the other is vaccine and drug development. Look at, look at the uh, COVID. No, Pakistan was lucky and there were positive government policies. And we are very grateful to China that millions like of vaccines, it was donated to us at a goodwill gesture. But every time with all the diseases, this is not going to happen. Pakistan had to spend a little like to purchase the, purchase the vaccines. <clears throat> but why this NIH in Pakistan, National Institute of Health, like when we were kids or medical students, this used to manufacture some of the vaccines, anti-rabies vaccines, anti-snake bite, anti -snake vac bite vaccines, and many other vaccines, but all have gone. Like all have gone. Now, if any outbreak of any of the epidemics occurs in Pakistan with 220 millions of the population, can we afford the vaccines? God saved us from COVID, like with the help of China's vaccines, but can we afford it? Answer is no. So this is a this is this is a brain opening or like thought that we must go for the vaccine and the drug development with the help of the engineers, with the help of the industry. It requires conjoint strategies of the physicists, phys physics people, mathematicians, clinicians, biologists, and physicians and scientists a transdisciplinary approach. But physicists have played their role. Mathematicians have played their role. Like biologists have played their role. Scientists have played their role. Have the clinicians or the physicians play some role in vaccine or drug development? That is a question to you all. So we must go for vaccine and drug development with physicists, mathematicians, biologists, and scientists. And then is the telemedicine. And then is the telemedicine. Like telemedicine in Pakistan is very much essential because we have a train, plain, like marshy areas, we have mountains <clears throat> and so forth. Like, and there are three joints, as I told you, they, they are located in Pakistan, Hindu Kush, Himalaya and Karakram. 
So there are far off areas where doctors cannot reach, even paramedic cannot reach. So we can help them through the telemedicine and e-health, not only its usage, but right from A to Z of the telemedicine. The digital transmission of medical imaging, remote medical diagnosis and evaluation and video consultation with the specialist. So we are the users community, user society. We use Toyota or Mercedes. Similarly, we use telemedicine, we use robotic surgery, we use gamma knife, we use artificial limbs, we use a stenting a process, only use it like, but we have a little role in with the industry in manufacturing, designing, customizing, redesigning, improvisation, and so forth. So that will be a day when, according to Harden, which was a learning objective of today, that is from isolation, we have to go to the top uh, stair, which is interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approach for a better healthcare. A doctor must join the take home messages. A doctor with the engineer, of course, in the industry, must join their hands. Doctors of the all branches, engineers of the all facets with the, with the multifaceted industry should join hands for better health care. This is the take home message. Translational medicine is an interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary science. We use in the speeches, translation, translation, like, but it is interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary science. Doctors and engineers and the industry together can bring revolution in diagnostic and therapeutics for the better health care. So according to Harden, so we must refrain from isolation and we must go to interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approach. Otherwise we will lag behind. We are lagging behind and we will further lag behind. With these words, I thank you very much for your patience and I apologize if I will be harsh at some points. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, uh, Professor Aslam. Um, highlighting the need of uh, the doctors to play some role, uh, especially in the uh, combining the, uh, the medical health with the engineering uh, to our industry. I mean, when you talk about the industry and combining things, we, have, uh, we are lucky to have uh, Mr. Umar Hayat here and also Sarvat Hussain who can uh, definitely ask you some questions. Um, uh, before that, I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Zed to say uh, some comments. Uh, th thank you, Dr. Akhtar. And uh, thanks a lot. I mean, this is a very <clears throat> inspirational um, <clears throat> cross-industry presentation and we call it in Urdu Tawajjo Dilao. This is really amazing, really amazing and extremely good one of the best presentation we have seen so far. And, but, you know, I am so lucky that we have Professor Dr. Sarvat Hussain, who is not only a radiologist, but an innovator and mm. uh, still, you know, involved in two things, writing a book on radiology mm. and also innovator and in the process of patenting some of uh, his innovation. So I will invite Professor Dr. Sarvat Hussain to share his views and, uh, you know, just comment on the presentation for today. Over to you, Dr. Sarvat Hussain. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. First of all, uh, Professor Aslam Sahib Ji, Assalamu Alaikum. I, uh, I visited NAMS and uh, you were very kind to uh, okay, actually sit, sit, through my, uh, sit through my useless lecture, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> basically two, two points, actually three points. First of all, it's a tremendous uh, wake-up call for, for all of us. 
and I will not take it too much time because I think everybody feels that way. Secondly, sir, you were you talked about uh, the uh, us in our country trying to follow the Western medicine and absence of our own data and absence of description of our own diseases and their management within the resources of our uh, society in our country until uh, we are able to uh, uh, economically uh, compete with the West. So in that regard, I um, have started writing a book on radiology uh, for the, uh, it's called Global Radiology, and it talks about how to uh, use radiological, uh, how to deliver radiology services within the confines of the restricted resources in uh, the developing world uh, in terms of equipment and in terms of uh, staff and skills. So I think there is a <clears throat> definite uh, role of our uh, person, uh, sir, like yourself with your leadership is to try and develop our own books and description of diseases and their local treatment for the maximum benefit to the common person. I know that we uh, concentrate on tertiary uh, medication as a tertiary medicine as uh, bragging points, but the most uh, one of the most important, in my opinion, is to try and bring technology and the uh, new resources to the common man who at this time cannot have even a chest x-ray when they, when they require, let alone CT and uh, uh, MRI. And <clears throat> even though I'm a specialist, <clears throat> I have come to believe that specialty only touches a small minority of patients in our societies, while a large majority of patients with very little intervention and prevention, as you stated, sir, they can benefit uh, and reach the definition, or at least partly the definition that you have forwarded for the uh, uh, for health. So <clears throat> I think we have to address, as you quite rightly said, you know, at all levels uh, to elevate the level of uh, uh, of health. And uh, thirdly, my last comment is on technology. <clears throat> Again, we have to <clears throat> we have to uh, develop and create technology that again is simple, available, less expensive, and can be available to common people. And in that regard, I'm trying to develop some interventional radiology uh, devices, which will be produced locally and will be. Uh, will be inexpensive enough that they can uh, be uh, available to common men and hopefully safe enough that uh, uh, more radiologists will be able to uh, develop it. So yeah. once again, uh, uh, outstanding lecture and uh, food for thought. And of course, from a, someone, a scholar and a leader, that's what we expected from you and we got it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, Professor. Yeah. You're doing a wonderful job. And so I would say all the physicians, less Dr. Sarvato <laughs> Well, <laughs> well <laughs> I'm just um, a bit curious because you have you have represented <clears throat> and you have been um, um, heads of or advisors of so many institutes, especially in Pakistan. Um, I was expecting some examples that uh, after your uh, this thought provoking uh, lecture that okay we have initiated or these hospitals have initiated these uh, medical engineering uh, joint ventures in the industry so that have I missed it or I, I'm just thinking that we must have done something um, because this is very advanced field now like one of them is Mr. Serva just mentioned. So, yeah, that's right. There, 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 there's something, some, some, some work is being done uh, by the mm -hmm. engineers and doctors together, but not to the extent, but not to the extent, it's very minimal. So okay. even in biomedical engineering, it is only repairing the equipment, you know it well, only repairing the equipment is not biomedical engineering, that is biomedical service. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> 
So we are, I'll, I'll ask we, are producing, we, we are producing service engineers and not manufacturing or designing engineers. <laughs> okay. So yes, I have one uh, more comment. Uh, one yes, more comment, if I may, five seconds. I think uh, uh, about 20 years from now or 25 years from now, the uh, medical world will remember the effort of uh, Dr. Uh, Sayyid Uzair, how he put and brought so many great minds like Professor uh, Aslam uh, to this forum to exchange and to deliver the knowledge and the coordination that uh, became uh, uh, will become the uh, the leading uh, source in medicine. I really think that uh, well, I want to give uh, our professor, our Dr. Uzair, an honorary professorship from Merit University. Yeah, you from my side. Yes, uh, uh, Omar, um, you want to say Thank something? Thank you. Sure, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Dr. Akhtar. And I second Dr. Uh, Sarvath what he said about uh, Dr. Azar. Um, I will say the wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Um, as we all know, our best talent go to medical universities. Okay, And it's a very unfortunate if they just become uh, just looking at the patients or seeing the patients. Surely, it's a great cause and it's a great profession, but that's not a good use of the talent we have. So I, I certainly agree with Dr. Islam. They really need to go and think out of the box. And each of the disciplines, each of the discipline, Dr. Islam, you presented, if we implement as is and force it like China force to any issue, because it comes from the top and then it gets implemented, Believe me, we would be par to par with the West. But it why you are to going to China? It is, we can even do from the army. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Uh, without going too much into the politics, that's where they exactly need to impose. So I have been uh, recently to the China, and I have a discussion with so many people, and I was saying, you know, there is a there is a little benefit in dictatorship as well because yes. things are implemented in a certain manner, okay? And then everybody follows those, okay? And that's how exactly how they control the COVID as well. But let me, uh, another message to, to our physicians. The kind of practice we are in, after the artificial intelligence, we don't need the, such doctors. You feed the every symptoms you have, that will prescribe you the drug. That's exactly what we are doing, right? So there will not be the room for the practice we have as a doctors. So we certainly need to think out of the box. So it's a really need of the time. So Dr. Islam, you pointed out very well. Uh, I have nothing to add. Uh, okay. I will say also, the reason I approached to Merit and we founded this Revive Pharma was exactly for that reasons. Because I strongly believe that physicians we have they can do much more than just simply doing uh, seeing the dog uh, seeing the patients and out of that i think we will have a sometime very soon as an example or as a case study that doctors certainly can do more than just seeing the patients so i stop here and thank you very much really very uh, like a out of box thinking thank you at this point thank i would you. like to uh, read some comments uh, from our participants uh, nusrat mushahid has mentioning that it is an argument of uh, chicken or egg, um, uh, who is first? Should industry people seek doctors with the skills to guide them or the doctors who have ideas to seek industry, engineering, et cetera? Um, the enabling environment responsibility of the governments remain missing. Can you suggest some platform from where the doctors are provided motivation to develop linkages and actually facilitate linkages? Sir, I will be bitter right from the primary level. So why there is, on the government level, why there is dichotomy, I can't do much. Why there is dichotomy right from metric education in Pakistan in the two groups, pre-engineering and pre-medicine. Look at it, Zulmay, pre-medicine and pre-engineering. 
a doctor must know mathematics. A mathematician must know biology. So there should be only two groups, humanities group and the science group. That could be a big recommendations of this forum. Like this could be a humanities group and a science group. Mathematics should be a compulsory subject. Same is for biology, for engineering. So science group has got biology, mathematics. So when we know the ABC of mathematics at FST or intermediate level, probably some of us write neurons like mathematics more. And if they like mathematics more, they may go for radiation or radiation oncology or biomedical engineering or stenting or say electrophysiology, electrophysiology or medicine equipment more. So we don't learn mathematics like, and then as we are scared of mathematics and physics. And even someone teaches me today, it goes above my head. I can't understand it because my knowledge of mathematics is primitive like at the level of metric, that's all. So that, that means right from the beginning, the seedling needs to be done. And if this is the recommendation of today's forum and it goes to the hard being, that means our job of this forum is done. Thank you. There's uh, something similar to that. Uh, your answer, uh, Mr. Nadir Hayad is also mentioning the health risk behavior should be prioritized area of public health policies and a workable strategy should be advised and uh, devised to promote health literacy of the uh, community. So you have almost uh, touched upon that topic as well. Um, my, my one take is, you mentioned about e-health, and I think Pakistan is quite progressed in e-health services. Um, I can name you a couple of uh, industry who has been very advanced, like Child Life, where they provide the services to the children for emergency department. They have over 200 um, telephone services available where the trained FCPS uh, emergency physician are sitting and looking after all the other emergencies in different areas. Same with the um, uh, Indus Hospital. Uh, they have yes. several hundred uh, points where they are serving uh, through the uh, e-health or from the uh, audiovisual um, uh, communication and, and utilizing that from, from starting from the lady health worker who visit to the door to door to the community and also to the tertiary center where they are utilizing their skilled, um, well-trained doctors in one area and he's looking after in a few different uh, areas at one, uh, one time. So from that, I think it's a very good thing that we are doing it. The third, second yeah. thing is I have also noticed uh, that in our engineering universities, uh, especially NAD and um, uh, perhaps in Lahore, they are starting to have some startups or st starting to have some uh, incubators where uh, they are hatching our young mind uh, to create something. Only thing is we need it is either, because as you are one of the advisory at CPSP, um, needed that we should include a subject or we should include uh, in our medical uh, it, uh, like uh, what is our, uh, our medical syllabus, a topic of innovation. Uh, yeah, and that, that can open the that can open a little bit of uh, thought provoking ideas. And even out of 400 medical students in one college, four can come out of it. I mean, they mm -hmm. can be the game changer. Yeah, can't agree more. So that's right. <clears throat> Absolutely. In the interest of time, we are just past one minute over. I would like if Dr. Uzair has anything to say or, uh, or, or Professor, you yourself. So <clears throat> thank you very much, Dr. Akhtar Hamid, and for your uh, time on a quick tortoise. You are doing quite a lot as a president of you know, Canada-Pakistan Research and Development Council and uh, taking so many initiatives. But this was definitely an extremely interesting, thought-provoking, policy making uh, presentation from, from General Muhammad Aslam. And we are extremely thankful for his time and uh, sharing his thought. He, 
he is roughly like the babai of physiology back in pakistan so that is a very suited title for him and i think look at his time management brilliant super you know start dot on time and closed at 43 minute amazing amazing you know this is something to be learned other than the presentation as well the command the control the precision so everything uh, and with this you know we are extremely thankful to our participants you know who are joining this thing the young professional the medical student the faculty and from lundikotal to karachi and from east to west coast and our technical team who is providing all the support services and doing 90% of the main job valid and his team we are thankful to them and our participant in addition to uh, our panelists dr umar hayat professor dr sarwat so we are thankful to all of them with this we are extremely thankful and say goodbye to all of you from apna merit so all the best wishes enjoy the ramzan advanced ramzan mubarak and a weekend thank you very much and with this we close thank you very much all the best thank you very much i'm honored thank all you sir all the best bye bye all the best